Hello and welcome to week 31 of this 52 week series for the Web Pro on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in this space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I want to start talking about application request routing. I want to spend a few weeks on this. And if you've been following this series, the last few weeks we've been talking about high availability web farms and also scalability to be able to scale out to multiple servers. So application request routing ties in perfectly with this and basically what it is, is it is a load balancing option available that Microsoft has provided and available to anyone that manages IS servers. So other options that are available, which I'm not going to cover, uh, at least not in the near term, is hardware load balancer. So you have, for example, the F5, Big IP, or Netscaler, Founder Netrix, Server Iron, Cisco Picks, and, and various other hardware load balancers that are available that people can use. And so what Microsoft has done is they've created a reverse proxy, which is really the same thing, and it's a load balancer that can handle that for us. And it works as a real simple, fast, small, and efficient add-on to IIS itself. So today I want to just show an intro only and to get a feel, and then I want to touch base on what I call the three touch points to understand the flow within the load balancer here. So let's just take a look at this screenshot here. If we go to IIS.net and you search in ARR, hit enter in the search, and here the first option here is to download it. And so even just in their screenshot here, you can see you have the request comes in from the web to the load balancer. We'll talk about high availability for this itself in future weeks. And then we also have the back-end nodes that is able to forward the request through. And that's what ARR does, is it sits at this layer here to take and proxy or reverse proxy those requests. So let's just dig right in. And so first thing what you want to do is on a new fresh server, this is IS7 or 7.5, 7, 7 or greater, you can go to IS.net, do the search for that page we were just on, and install it. Once you install it, you're going to see the server farms section. This is what it adds. Again, it's very lightweight. It's not intrusive at all. So let me introduce you to the servers that I have in my environment here, in case you haven't been watching the series here so far. I have two servers I've been working on the last while to get in sync in terms of the IS configuration. And so this is the one, the DC is the primary in this demo lab, and then we have Web02. So those two are in sync. And I've set up a page called info.aspx, which simply says you're on server, and it has the server name, so 5509 in this case. And the other server is 5508. And the IPs, uh, this one ends in a dot .5, and this one ends in the dot .22. And so what we want to do is we want to have the request come in and alternate between these two nodes. So let's see if I can do this in less than a minute and just kind of set up the basic one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to server farms. By the way, I switched back to the primary node is the third server that I'm using as a load balancer. I'm going to create a server farm and let's just call this my farm one. So we'll hit next and we'll put in the server addresses. So 206, 72, 117 and one was five and the other was 22. And notice there are some advanced settings you can do with the bindings, but for the most part you don't even need to do that. We're just going to keep it hidden for now and just show, just to get it going. So I'm going to hit finish. Now it gives a message that says, would you like us to create a rule for you? Now I'm going to cover next week why I do not like to do this, and but for the sake of just showing you how easy it is to get up and going, let's say yes, and I'll explain this further later. So we're going to say yes, create that rule. Done. And amazingly, that was it. So now we see this server farm called My Farm One, and let's test it out. If we go here and let's actually request to this particular server I'm on, 72.117.30, and in okay, case so we have a page, of course we can't tell what server this is. So let's go to our info.aspx and hit enter and notice this. We have the 5508, which is one of the servers. And now if I hit F5 a few times to refresh, it is not switching back and forth between the nodes. And that's fine, I'll show you why this is. Uh, but first, we're done. I did it, well under a minute. You can see that's all it takes. We create the server farm, it created the default rule for us, and now we have a load balancer set up. So as you can see, it's nothing to be scared of to get going. And even as we get going, it's very powerful, very flexible, performs extremely well, and it's a really good solution for many situations. But now let's dig in deeper to understand what's happening. First, if you go on my server farm, and you can see under servers, you have the servers are set up, 
and it shows they are, are online, and this is just our state. They can either be online or offline. And we go to, here's the, here are the details, and let's go to load balance first. And here we can choose, right now it's at the least current request, and just because it's so fast, uh, it had no need to switch back and forth between the nodes. But let's switch to weighted round robin, and let's do an even distribution of 50-50. And so it says it's going to reset our runtime statistics. That's fine. So say OK. And let's go here and refresh. So we see 5508, and I'm hitting F5. And we see 5509, 08, 09. And you can see it's switching back and forth. Now uh, I'm actually hitting F5 two times in between. So sometimes it hangs on to that request just a little bit longer but it's switching back and forth between our nodes. And there we have a load balancer alternating between the nodes as we were hoping it would. So let's take a look at our runtime statistics. And we see here in monitoring and management, and you can see there's the two nodes. It shows them as healthy. And we can see request per second, zero, is so few. Response time is one millisecond, very fast. No current request, it's completely caught up. And the total requests, we can see 10 and 12, and if we go back here, let me refresh a few times, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, let's say, it was 10 and 12, now it's 13 and 14, and that's exactly 5 more requests than it had before. Now let me show you something, if I do this in Chrome and refresh, it stays at 5508, and it's kind of odd, and I actually I, I should check the logs to find out, I'm not exactly sure why, but I think it's sending a request for fav icon or something like that in between. And it's actually sending two requests because what happens is notice both are incrementing at the exact same amount. See 21, 22, let's refresh, and we see 22, 23. So there's two requests going in Chrome, and that's why it doesn't seem to switch back and forth. And I think it's a request for fav icon. And so we see the failed requests, requ size, the distribution is nearly 50-50, response time, or sorry, I should say the response size, and also the load balance weight. This is very handy, and you can see how easy it is to, to be able to get to the statistics here. And we have some other information. Our health test is, comes in really handy, and I'll cover this in future weeks on some things to consider for your health tests. But you can do that, so if there's an issue with either of the servers, it takes it out of rotation. And we see the proxy, some information here. And again, I'll dig through this further in other weeks. And our routing rules, and right now we're allowing URL rewrite to manage the rules. And we're going to change that, though, later on. And finally, server affinity. And here, if you don't want it to switch back and forth, and you want to just have it stick to a single session, you can turn on client affinity. And based on a cookie, which virtually every browser accepts nowadays, it will ensure that that request sticks to the same server all the time. So if you have classic ASP or you have session state and you don't want to have to manage that elsewhere, you can ensure that they keep to the same node all the time once they get their initial request. So there's our quick intro of what ARR is. Now I want to show you briefly what I call the three touch points. And this is important as we get through to the other weeks. And when a request comes into ARR, what's really happening here? And so the first thing that, that happens is a request comes in and IIS will handle it now I do want to save changes, we'll say, we'll say no. And I asked where we take that request, and in this case, contosa.com gets a request by IP address with this binding right here. Notice we get for no host name for all IP addresses. So contosa.com gets it. But now before, so it gets, it binds to it, but before it actually reads from anything on disk, it's not reading any content or images or anything else. Now our second touch point is URL rewrite. And this is how AR, this is a strength of ARR, is leveraging URL rewrite. And so if we go in here, notice the rule it created for us, ARR underscore my farm one. And but here's what I don't like, is I don't like how they manage it. It's too simplistic, and it's completely fine if you only have a single server farm that you're managing. But we're going to be having so many situations where we want more than that. And so notice here, you use wildcards where it says anything matches, there's no condition. So every single request, let's route to my server farm one. But it's fair enough. It shows what's happening. And next week, I'm going to be covering this in more depth. So now that comes through. It's bound. And then the third touch point is it's sending to my farm one, which is right here. That takes a request. 
and it's going to alternate however your algorithm is set for between these different web nodes. And that's ARR in a nutshell, an intro. I hope you found this useful, and I hope you come back next week. We have a lot more to cover. Thank you.